Cucumber, you're such a great dog. Well, that's probably why the newspaper chose you to be featured on the back page of the Sunday dog section. Don't worry, Lucy. You were chosen to be featured, too. Our family is blessed with amazing dogs. Hey, did these dogs get invited to the photo shoot, too? Ada, Otto, you made it. Awesome. Hi, Roxy. What are you doing here? My dad is the newspaper's chief photographer, so I'm helping him organize the photo shoot. Sit tight, everyone. My dad's almost finished setting up. Roxy, with Willie here being such a fine example of canine excellence, I'm not sure why you would even need those other dogs. Our dogs are excellent. All your animals are excellent. That's why my dad chose them to be in the photograph. That's true. Our church is blessed with great dogs. We all talk about our dogs so much. It's great to finally meet them and all in one place. Hey, Jax, how's Groucho? Very handsome. Dachshunds are very photogenic. That's why he was chosen to be photographed. I guess they are all exceptional dogs. Willie will be proud to be pictured with such noble beasts. <gasps> what was that? Hi, everyone. Say hello to flower petals. <gasps> Monty, flower petals, you're here. Great, let's assemble for the photo. Monty's dog doesn't seem very dog-like. Flower Petals is obviously a cat. Okay, good. I was afraid I was the only one who thought that. This is outrageous! I object to Monty bringing a cat to a dog photo shoot. Yeah! Flower Petals being chosen makes it less special for Lucy. Cats are dogs' natural oh. enemies. All right, calm down, everyone. How can we be calm with a cat in our midst? Flower Petals is here because my dad thought a cat would be a good addition to the photo. But it's a cat! <clears throat> it's not for us to say if Flower Petals should be chosen or not chosen. Now, let's get into positions for the photo. Or do you all not want to be in the newspaper? No, 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 All right, then. Everybody say doggy! Doggy! doggy. <laughs> <laughs> that was a neat sermon. Yes, indeed. Pastor Pete really brings the Bible to life. Epiphany, the time to share the light of God. Except, which light was he talking about? Well, God's light, of course. Yes, but which light is God's light? I... I don't know. How are we supposed to share God's light with the world if we don't know where to get it? <gasps> huh? Don't know where to get it? Why, it's simple. To find God's light, we must travel to the Temple of Mystery at the ends of the Seventh Continent. Where? It's right here on this ancient map. We'll need warm weather clothes to survive the paths of doom. Wading boots to cross the river of despair. And rope to scale down the canyon of gloomy gloom. I had no idea all this stuff was right around the church. It is a big property. Are you prepared for the most epic journey of your lives from which you may never return? Sure. I just need to be home by 2 p.m. We can make that work. Onward! The map says that the Temple of Mystery is on the other side of the canyon ahead. I don't have the strength. There's got to be a better way. No, we must press forward. Just so we're aware of the time, it is 12.45. So we're doing okay! Onward! Behold, the Temple of Mystery! Neat. There it is! God's light! Enough for all of us! At long last, our quest is at an end. It's a mirror? What? 
Why? Where's God's light? We traveled all this way! Oh, oh, I get it! That's what Pastor Pete meant in his sermon! God's light is reflected through us! So, God's light isn't in the box? No. When we spread the good news of Jesus, God's light shines through all of us! So, now we can share it with everyone! Wonderful. So it's just this mirror in the box then? Yeah! What a treasure! I see. Oh, well, it's 1.50. We really should get back. You know, I have a mirror in my house. Today. Unless you all think she wasn't. I might have misread that situation. No, it was a great sermon, Clara. I like the toast and jam part the best. Uh, I think that was your breakfast, Monty. Oh, yes. Well, the worship service was also good. Just not jam good. I think we all came away from that service knowing what we have to do. Yep. Pastor Donna was pretty clear. The season of the Epiphany is a time to learn about following Jesus. Yep. Completely clear. All right, little Jesus statue, let's get going. Monty doesn't seem to understand what follow Jesus means. Well, we've got the rest of the day free. You ready to do this, right? Let's go! You're right, Otto. This is a much better plan than following the stained glass Jesus at church. Yeah, who ever heard of a moving stained glass Jesus? Any movement yet? None yet. Maybe we just have to be patient. Come on, 50 foot Jesus. Oh, this might take a while. That's fine, Otto. Pastor Donna was very clear. The epiphany is about learning to follow Jesus. We just need him to go somewhere so we can follow him. He must know we're watching. Clara, this is silly. I've got a better idea. So, if Jesus doesn't know we're watching, he might start moving, and then we can follow him? Exactly. With this disguise, Jesus won't even know we're here. Anything happening yet? Should be any minute now. Are you looking at that Jesus statue, Mr. Snowperson? We're not a snowman, Monty. It's a disguise. We're waiting for Jesus to move so we can follow him. Oh, I see. Does it matter that it's a statue and it won't ever move? Well, it's a better plan than following your own Jesus on a string. That can't lead you anywhere. Oh, I I'm not following it. It's just there to remind me to think about what Jesus taught us to do. My mom says that's what it means to follow him. Ooh, a floaty thing. Let's go check it out, Jesus. <laughs> Sometimes Monty doesn't understand the finer points of things like this. Yeah, he's young. Oh, I think Jesus is moving. Nope, false alarm. It was a bird. Church in the evening seems an awful lot like Sunday school. No way. It's completely different. It's, um, at night. And then there's the best part of getting together at church in the evening. We get to order pizza. All right. We've got to get down to the important business of deciding. What are we putting on the pizza? Uh, I like pepperoni. I'm good with anything. Except for green peppers. Oh, or mushrooms. Oh, or, or red peppers. Blech. Wow, is that it, Otto? Yeah, I'm a pretty easygoing guy. Oh, no onions, though. No onions? Is it even a pizza without onions? I need to have my onions and every kind of meat that is available. Jax, we're not going to put that much meat on it. I only want salmon meat myself. 
Oh, and I must insist on the white sauce for the pizza instead of tomato. Have you heard of Hawaiian pizza? It sounds super yummy. It's got ham and pineapple and... Uh, I'm gonna stop you right there, sis. <laughs> now is not the time to be trying new kinds of pizza. You never want to try new kinds of pizza. Hey, I'm fine with any kind of pizza. As long as it isn't a new kind of pizza. Or a pizza I don't like. You're too picky about your pizza, Otto. At least he isn't going to bury it under a mountain of meat and onions. You don't even want tomato sauce, Victor. Let's go! Let's go! Who puts ham and pineapple on pizza? People in Hawaii! That's him! There are no people in Hawaii! That land is uninhabited and you know it! Clara, what are you doing out here? I don't want to have to go to a new church. What? Why would you have to go to a new church? This is your church. But all the kids are fighting in there, and then their parents will come in and here, and they'll start fighting, so then we'll have to hold a church council meeting, and, and everyone will take sides and start yelling, and then the church will break up. You think all of that is going to happen because of pizza topics? It's going to happen because everyone is fighting. Fighting doesn't mean the church will break up. Churches can break up. Well, that's true, but not over pizza, usually. Usually? Otto, we have to stop this. What can we do? Well, when I fight with my brother and sisters, my parents tell me to remember that I love them. Does that work? Uh, kind of. It's hard. But I know God loves us all, even when we're mad at each other. And we don't have to agree on everything to still love each other. Yeah. And you and I love pizza that doesn't have mushrooms or onions. So when we go back in there, how about you help me make that happen? As long as we can have pepperoni on it. church pageant about the Sermon on the Mount, I should practice speaking on top of a mount. I didn't know Jesus gave a sermon from a mount of snow. It wasn't. It was a hill or small mountain. We have to work with what we've got. Fine. It's too cold out here to argue. Just say what Jesus said so we can go back inside. Okay. Ahem. Me, 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 la, 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 no, no, no. What? I need to warm up my voice. And I need to warm up my toes. They're freezing. Okay, okay, here I go. Thank you all for coming. It's super great all of you could make it out to the mount to hear me, Jesus, give a sermon. Probably not how he opened the sermon, but fine, keep going. There are a lot of people out there I want to congratulate because they are blessed. Blessed are the very wealthy and popular. They have great houses and lots of friends and... Wait, Otto! Is that right? That doesn't sound right! No, don't stop him. The longer it takes him to finish, the longer we'll be out here. But I don't think those are the people Jesus said were blessed. Are you sure? If I had a big house and everyone liked me, I'd be pretty sure I was blessed. Jax, you brought the Bible. Who did Jesus say was blessed? Right. Let's see. Uh, the poor in spirit, the meek, people who are reviled for following Jesus... What's reviled mean? It means people are mean to you for following Jesus. That sounds like the opposite of popular. It is! So go say it so we can get back inside. Is that snow? Yep, that's definitely snow. All right. <clears throat> Blessed are the meek, because meek people are pretty nice. Blessed are those who are... Uh, Reviled for believing in me. And blessed are, wait, okay, how are these people blessed? They sound like they're really unlucky. Maybe being blessed isn't the same as being lucky. Can we discuss this inside, please? I'm just saying it's surprising that these people are blessed. I have no idea what poor in spirit means, but it definitely doesn't sound like fun. I don't know. Hmm, maybe things are just super different in the kingdom of God. What do you think, Jax? Jax? 
Yeah, come on, Jax. What do you think? <sighs> yes, this is a much more comfortable place to watch the sermon. Hmm. Coco. I love Rib Fest! You get to eat all the ribs you want, and all the money goes to the food shelf. I intend to eat ten ribs at this year's Rib Festival to beat Jax's record of nine and a half. Hey, Jax, are you ready to eat ribs? Mm-mm. Jackson, you love Rib Fest. He's writing something. I got my tonsils out. I can't eat or speak, period. <sighs> oh, no. Jax, you have to miss Rib Fest? But it won't be the same without you. I'm so sorry, Jax. Can you eat anything? Ugh, tapioca pudding. But you hate tapioca pudding. <laughs> you know what, Victor? I don't think I'm gonna go either. What? Not go to Rib Fest? If Jax can't eat at the Rib Fest, then I don't want to eat at the Rib Fest. You're right, Otto. Hey, you guys. Are you all coming in? They're about to unveil the ribs. No can do. We're not eating ribs because Jax can't eat ribs. He got his tonsils out. But I already bought my ticket. And the money's going to fight local and global hunger. We can't not support Rib Fest. But we have to support Jax in this difficult time of no ribs and endless tapioca. You're both right. But how can we possibly do both? What if we buy tickets to the Rib Fest, but we never attend the Rib Fest? Whoa, whoa. That makes zero sense, Victor. We pay for the tickets, but we never eat a single rib. Our money helps the food shelf, and we join Jax in his solid food fast. And no one is the wiser. It's my most devious scheme yet. Um, how is that a scheme, Victor? It seems more like just a nice thing to do. My most devious scheme yet! <laughs> Everybody be cool. Watch the master at work. Hello, Fiona. Three tickets to Rib Fest, please. Okay. Enjoy the ribs. Oh, I will enjoy the ribs. I will. Every last bite. <laughs> Here's a ticket for you, Otto. And for you, Jax. Now everyone has a ticket. Now throw them away! <laughs> oh, oh, that was so mischievous and underhanded. Ah, oh, I feel so alive. Um, you feel good because you helped other people, Victor. That's what that feeling is. Well, that's what I love about this scheme. It has so many facets. Let's eat some tapioca. To Jax. The best rib eater in the world. So if I get hit with the water balloon, then I'm out? Well, Otto, a red balloon means that you're out, but a blue balloon means that you just go back to the base that you came from. Wow. I can't wait to play water balloon kickball this spring. As soon as we get... Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. I believe that's Clara's... Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Am I right? Definitely. Let's go find her. <laughs> Clara? Yes? I mean, no. I mean, go away. You don't want to be near me. Oh, well, that's not true, Clara. We're your friends. But you don't know. You don't know what I've done. I was on my way to the library to pick up the latest edition of Big Book of Safety when I spotted them. A whole bin of Choco Chocolate Swirl Bites. At first, I just wanted to look at them. And then just hold one. And then...
Um, so did you want some of those or? I do. I do! Oh no! Ah! Okay, well, have a candy rific day. I understand if none of you can forgive me, God certainly won't. Wait, I really don't understand. You didn't do anything. But I did, Otto. I coveted that candy. I broke one of God's commandments. Which commandment? Do not covet your neighbor's goods. I'm not gonna lie, Clara. This seems pretty bad. I can't really relate since I'd never do something like coveting. Actually, I think coveting is just wanting something that isn't yours. You mean like when I see someone with something awesome and I think how much I would like to take it and have it be mine? Yeah. Oh, well, I do that all the time. Wait, I I've done that too. Ada, you're the only one here who hasn't broken any commandments. What do we do? Well, I've coveted stuff too. Gasp! Say it isn't so, Ada. You don't seem like a bad kid at all. I'm not. Not according to Pastor Donna. When I told her I'd broken a commandment, she said, It's all right, Ada. There are no bad kids, just bad choices. God still loves you no matter what. So, even though I coveted that delicious candy, God forgives me? Yeah. And just because we make one bad choice doesn't mean we can't try to make a different choice next time. Oh. Maybe next time I can just pick a different way to the library so I'm not tempted. There you go. Do we have this all wrapped up? Good, because the candy store is still open for another 15 minutes. Follow me. And then I'll play my snake in the grass card combined with my snake charm. Wait, go back. What does this snake in the grass do again? It gives me plus four to my stealth attack. So that plus Havoc Viper's bonus ability for a total of nine explosions. So that means... It means you lose, Otto. I already lost, but we just started. I'm really, really good at Chromobots the card game. So now I get to take all of your character cards and put them in my deck. You get to take all my character cards, but you already have so many. Those are the rules, Otto. This is it right, Clara. You tricked me. How did I trick you? By being really good at this game. What would Jesus do, huh, Clara? Jesus wouldn't be a sore loser, Otto. <laughs> a sore loser? We'll see who's the sore loser when we're playing dodgeball in gym tomorrow. <gasps> oh, no. I forgot we were playing dodgeball. Hey, Clara, fair warning, I'm really good at dodgeball. Jesus wouldn't be so immature, Otto. Yeah? Would Jesus do this? No, he wouldn't. Well, he wouldn't steal cards either. How's that sweet dodgeball justice feel? Dodgeball justice, praise and thanks. Oh, no, it's Leo's dodgeball-obsessed robot, Pat. He's got incredible hearing, but only when people are talking about... Dodgeball. Dodgeball. Uh, sorry, Pat, but we don't need any more players right now. He can have my spot. No, Monty! Praise and thanks. Oh. My parts! <laughs> Activate dodgeball cannon. Oh, no. Hey, Pat, game over. We're done, okay, Pat? Dodgeball cannon cannot shut down. Praise and thanks. T minus five, four, three, two, one. When I saw you were in the path of a supersonic dodgeball, I realized what Jesus would do. He'd love his friends, even if they took all his Chromobot cards. I'm sorry for being mean, Clara. I'm sorry, too. You can have your cards back. I, I know I take the rules too seriously sometimes. I just like playing cards with you. I like playing cards with you, too.
did you need some help getting up? Yeah, 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 I do. I really do. Thank <laughs> you. 